PC Woods Kids Tech Talk. Today I wanted to show you the MSI N260 GTX Lightning. It's a black edition. This one is an NVIDIA GeForce card as you can see and it comes with overclocking capabilities from the default 655 megahertz core speed and the memory is at 2.1 gigahertz effectively that's because it's using GDDR3 1792 megabytes Wow, that's a lot of memory. This is maxed out with a shader default frequency of 1404 megahertz as well. Now look at the box. It looks like one of those cases that you would carry your sniper gun inside with compartments. Here's a drawer that if you pull out has all the additional parts that come in the bundle. And let's go ahead quickly and run through that so you know what it comes with, okay? So obviously it's going to come with all the manuals and the CD and drivers, of course, that you would expect but also it has some cables and some dongles there as you can see. So the first one here is the adapter from DVI to VGA, right? So if you have an older monitor, then the HDMI also out from DVI and some cables. These are actually USB cables for that panel that you see here at the top that comes included. So what happens here is that you connect these cables to the panel so you can control the overclocking. So you can have, either have the panel on the inside of your case or on the outside and we'll go through that in a second this is the manual for it of course that gives you all the instructions on how to use it there's the uh, driver software CD that I mentioned a second ago with the utilities and uh, some additional manuals on the card itself on the lightning series here that we're using and this is a premium version of course they do have one that does not come with the panel this one here comes with the panel and the nice looking case now let's go through a little bit more about this card itself as you can see, this is a heavy and a large card, right? It's using two fans and it's got a very thick board on it, right? So it's made out of high quality parts. Also, it's using two six pin PCI Express connectors. So you gotta make sure that you have that amount of connectors on your power supply, of course. And the quality of the capacitors and everything, you can tell that this is a very good, really well made board. Uh, it comes with DVI and VJ out and a natively built-in HDMI out which supports the audio for HDMI built-in so you don't need a cable for that so very nicely done there for that and like I said it is a heavy board it is using the twin fan called twin frozer that's the nickname and five heat pipes I like the coloring though the dark chrome look to the card right it's got a nice brushed metallic finish to it so it matches with your dark black case on the inside and on the outside you've got the Air Force panel this allows you to basically touch the panel and increase and decrease the memory speed the frequencies that you can overclock to and you can install this in a five and a quarter inch board uh, on your case or you can have it sitting out outside of your case just like that and just plug it into your USB port on the outside of your case right so you've got two options either inside of the case like this or outside of the case and as you can see here it's a touch panel it doesn't have buttons you have to feel for the uh, panel and press it to increase the memory or the core speed and the shader frequency as well you can max it all out now it does come with predefined modes so if you're not quite sure you know what to set it at if you're not really using uh, the card for 3d gaming well it has a default mode that you can reset it Obviously, it comes with a bunch of other modes depending on what you want, right? Depending on what you want to do with it. And uh, when you click on this lightning button here at the bottom, it displays what those settings are for each of those modes, right? So whatever it is that you've selected. So the gaming mode obviously has uh, the most uh, frequencies, the highest, because you're doing heavy 3D gaming, right? So it makes sense. Now, the requirements, like I said, you need to have PCI Express 2.0 compliant X16. It uses the width of two slots. It doesn't use two PCI slots. It uses one PCI slot, but it's two slots wide. Now, it does need a 600 watt power supply, so keep that in mind and um, make sure that your case has enough room for it as well. But as, as you can see, it's not that bad. It fits nicely in my Lian Li PC7FW case, as you can see here. So uh, it's not uh, terribly large. And um, there's still room at the uh, at the end, as you can see, because the power connectors are facing up. On idle, I'm getting 40 degrees Celsius. On full load, 63 degrees Celsius. Let's take a look at some more benchmarks here. Now, when I press those modes on the panel, you can see the default reset mode is the following. You can see the GPU clock there. On power saving mode, you can see that that's 
the GPU clock speed that power saving has. On office mode, when you select that on the panel, it's obviously very low frequencies, right, because you're hardly using it. Theater mode, you can see here as well, uh, it's slightly higher for watching movies and stuff like that. And, of course, the gaming mode that I mentioned a second ago ups all the frequencies. And you can actually unlock it by holding down that lightning button for more than three seconds. It'll change from the default gaming mode higher so that way you can overclock it beyond gaming mode. And here you can see that I've overclocked it even further beyond the gaming mode. So there is flexibility here for those hardcore um, overclocker enthusiasts. Now, here's some 3D Vantage GPU scores, right? So if you're looking to compare against uh, an ATI card, the HD4870 that I have is the closest card that comes to this one. So if you're looking, okay, what else can I, can I buy or what are you comparing it against? Well, the 4870 is it, okay? And here are the uh, benchmark results for um, Tom Clancy's Hawks, for example. Very, very close, very close. Here it is for Call of Duty as well, very close as well. But you can see that the uh, GTX Lightning, uh, the MSI card, does beat the um, the 4870 in some of these scores. It didn't beat it in the grid racing, though. That was pretty uh, interesting. It was the same on, uh, on Fallout 3, but on Stalker Clear Sky, definitely beat it uh, as well on the minimum max and the uh, average. Definitely higher than the um, than the ATI 4870, as you can see here. Here's the uh, 4870 results. So at least I got 10 frames per second more on uh, on the GTX. Now I tried to overclock both to be as equal as possible on the same machine. So you know, but MSI's quality board with military class components definitely showed off here that it was a quality premium board, and you can tell, right? This isn't a cheap uh, mainstream card. It is a really nice one. And if you're looking to overclock high, this is it. So I'd like to thank MSI for providing it. And I hope you enjoyed this video. And thank you for watching.